Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is April 17th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see we do have some clouds across much of the state this morning, and you can see our low pressure center here, this inside slider dropping down across the Intermountain West. This is positioning into place. It's going to bring some thunderstorm potential here for the next couple of days. We'll take a look at that as we go through the video. Then we'll take a look at the extended forecast because there is some interesting stuff out there as well. So let's dive into that stuff here. We can see the upper level water, mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the upper level low right here off the Southern California coast. And you can really see this thing, this cinnamon bun here dropping down across Idaho and down towards Nevada as we speak. So if we look at the visible satellite imagery, you can see how the clouds are banked up against a lot of the Sierra Nevada, kind of hit and miss clouds across some of the San Joaquin Valley, mostly hit there. You can see Southern California as well, really pushed up all the way towards the mountain crest. And you can see the spin in the atmosphere here. This is going to bring a frontal system with some actually pretty potent thunderstorms associated with it. It does look fairly progressive, but these could be producing some uh, pretty heavy precipitation amounts in a short period of time across some of the Southern Sierra Nevada, some of the desert areas out across portions of Nevada and in towards Utah as well. We'll take a look at the weather models on that here in a moment. But if you want a weather station at your own home, your place of residence here, check it out. This is a very fun weather station here. You know, it's only uh, 300 and some bucks and change, but it really is fun, especially for kids or family. If you want to watch this from your smartphone, wherever you go at broadcast live. So yeah, click on that link down below if you want to save 10% off. Now, take a look at infrared satellite imagery. So we just looked at the actual what was going on. And then you can see this is the forecast. And you can see these storms develop again as we go through this afternoon for the southern Sierra Nevada, across some portions of Nevada, back in towards Utah there. These could be prolific lightning producers and be dropping some heavy rainfall. And I lived out here in Tonopah, Nevada, worked for the National Weather Service for a while. And I know what small amounts of rain in a short period of time can do across some of the desert regions out here, including Death Valley and maybe even Las Vegas. And then you can kind of see the low pressure center spins as we go through the day tomorrow. And it may kick off some storms again for the higher terrain as this continues to trek off to the south and east. And we go on in towards Saturday morning there. It's pushing off to the east by that time. So looking at lightning strike density over the last 24 hours, you can see we had some pretty widespread lightning activity across some of the Southern Cascades, down through the Sierra Nevada, portions of Nevada. We didn't get any lightning strikes here across Southern California today uh yesterday though uh, there is a slight chance today but overall that kind of trend has been going down and there are online spotter uh, skywarn spotter classes that you can take this one for example is boise idaho but you don't have to live up there to you know take one of these classes you, you can still learn a lot so if you want to check out my patreon page i put the link in there you can sign up for that they're all virtual classes uh now looking at that slight chance of thunderstorms you can see it includes places like mammoth lake sequoia national park there's ridgecrest death valley Beatty, and tonopah out there across portions of Nevada. And this doesn't mean there can't be a couple lightning strikes outside of this area. And you can kind of see the wider view of that same thing here from the Storm Prediction Center. Um, but yeah, there's that thunderstorm threat. Now, we also have gusty winds accompanying this system. This is Las Vegas National Weather Service. You can see uh, this does include portions of California, and you can see some of these winds gusting 45, 50 miles per hour. So heads up for that. And again, these thunderstorms could also have some gusty and erratic winds with them as well. And Phoenix, portions of southeast California, some gusty winds out there as well. Some blowing dust is possible. Now, looking at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet, this makes sense, right? We had the upper level low off the coastline. There's our inside slider dropping down. They kind of phase together, set up over the southwest USA. And then we bounce the temperatures back here a bit. Another trough kind of slides down across Pacific Northwest, and we scroll off into the extended forecast. And some of the, the European artificial intelligence, I'll show you that here in a moment, is actually showing a system once we go off into the later portion of the following week here. We'll dive into that more in a moment. But if we take a look at the winds across the region, these westerlies and southwesterly, southerly winds across portions of uh, in southwesterly across a lot of Arizona. Then it turns northerly as that system starts to slide to the south. So the, the westerly winds are going to be fairly robust there across some of the peninsula range, some of the higher terrain. You can see the northeast wind across northern California by the time you go towards tomorrow morning coming down the Sacramento Valley, some east winds across the Sierra Nevada, and that pushes down into the San Joaquin Valley there as well.
As you go on into Friday night, you're going to see these northerlies out there across the Arizona-California border on in through the day Saturday as that low pressure system kicks off to the east. Uh, look at a daily 2-meter maximum temperatures. This is for today, Thursday, April 17th, and you can see some pretty warm temperatures there in some of the Sacramento Valley. We go through tomorrow. There's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can see how we warm up as we go through this weekend, and that low gets out of here, and we start to bring some warmer temperatures back for some of the desert areas as well, maybe getting up towards 100 for Death Valley on Monday. There's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and who knows what's going to come after that. Now, taking a look at composite reflectivity, the high-resolution rapid refresh here. So this is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 48 hours. There's our low-pressure center spinning there, and you can see the frontal system develop and drape all the way back across Nevada and across the Sierra Nevada, southern Sierra Nevada, and some of the desert areas. And these, again, would be prolific lightning producers. It doesn't look like much on this graphic, but if you're underneath one of these storms, again, some strong winds, some heavy rain, and some dangerous lightning is associated with these storms as we go through the day-to-day. And then they kind of trail off across Northern California. And this could kick off a couple showers across the Southern California uh, mountains as well. The Peninsula Range is right there. Would not completely rule out a lightning strike with some of that activity also. And then you can see the spin in the atmosphere as we go through Friday. Again, a few showers being popped off there and maybe a thunderstorm or two. You can see Daggett's right there. There's a salt and sea. And then you can see this frontal system kind of draped across portions of Arizona as that slides off to the east. Uh, lightning flash density potential. Let's scroll through this here. Same map, the high resolution. And you can see this lightning activity as we go through this afternoon. It starts to show up there about 2, 3, 4 o'clock, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then it starts to push off across portions of Arizona as we go into early tomorrow morning. If we look at the European, just kind of driving home that point, some snow for the higher terrain as well. And then you can kind of see as we go through this afternoon, there's that frontal boundary set up. And then again, we'll be spinning with us as we go through the day Friday also, and then kicking off to the east by the time we get off in towards Saturday, hopefully bringing some plentiful snowfall for the higher terrain of Arizona and for New Mexico and portions of Colorado. Now, lightning flash density potential for the day today. Again, you can see these could be prolific lightning producers here. So heads up for that if you're across those areas. And we go on in through tomorrow and Friday, and you can kind of see that pushing off to these by that time frame there. So total snow couture ratio on inches, just showing you we got a few inches coming for some of the California mountains there. And this could be a nice snowmaker here for portions of New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and Utah. Total precipitation, we'll just kind of scroll through this pretty quickly. This goes out 144 hours, and you can see that some for the higher terrain here. You know, overall, unless you're underneath one of those individual thunderstorms, we're not looking at huge precipitation amounts, but some areas could be getting up over a half an inch across the Peninsula Range and Transverse Range, maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch there. Uh, statewide snowpack, we're a little bit below average, but pretty close here. It looks like we are 82% uh, normal of date here. So, yeah, whatever, Mother Nature is going to do what she wants to do. But we are now starting into the melt-off date here as we go through the month of April, May, and then by the time we get to June, you can see how much uh, the snowpack is dramatically reduced. Um, artificial intelligence model here, 15-day precipitation anomaly. Not a great signal there, but, but that may change here coming up, and I'll show you something here starting now. We're looking at North America. There's Alaska. There's California here, kind of to the right of the screen. And if I put this into motion, so we got our low pressure system moving through, and then we got the one coming to the Pacific Northwest. And then the artificial intelligence wants to show this system right there. That would be kind of a fun system there. Late April, you know, active weather kind of rolling in here. So we'll watch the models for that. In fact, let's check out the European, uh, not the European artificial intelligence, but the European ensemble. And we'll look at last night's run and kind of see what it shows for that same time frame. Did it show any of that trough? and it drops that yeah it does show it there so we do have some ensemble agreement with that trough as well so that could be kind of interesting here as we go through the end of april maybe we'll get um you know some uh, a nice frontal system out of this we'll, we'll see how that goes i don't want to get too caught up in those details just quite yet here's the six to ten day through april 26 there's precipitation eight to 14 day and maybe the climate prediction center is picking up on that troughing there as well it kind of shows that above normal signal there for some of california but otherwise, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. Eyes on the sky, Sierra Nevada, higher terrain of Southern California, just in case. And watch out, Las Vegas portions of Nevada back up into Utah and on into northern portions of California. But yeah, watch out across the Southern Sierra Nevada tonight and today and tonight and across some of the desert areas out towards the Nevada border. So anyway, um, yeah, check back tomorrow. We'll go over all this again and I will talk to you guys later.